Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems, Technical Tuesday, and we again have special guest Quinn Cunningham, Hi. competitive shooter extraordinaire. No. He is joining us today for a conversation about carry. I realize we've never really talked about some of the advantages and disadvantages and considerations of where you EDC your gun, where do you conceal your pistol. Uh, for a long time, everybody just carried at the three o'clock position, that's what I do. Right. I noticed today that Quinn carries appendix and uh, so he's got a lot of background with that, and honestly, there's a lot of considerations and a lot of debate about right. this. So let's talk about it, and I think I'm going to be honest about the things that sort of bother me about appendix, um, and I think those are the things that people will echo maybe in the sure. comments, but there are also ways to do both well, and so we're going to talk about that. Right. We want to keep you safe. Um, all right, so I'm a 3 o'clock carrier. That means I carry the gun on the right side of my body. Uh, 3 or 3.30 is kind of where you maybe put the gun if you carry IWB there. Uh, safety is one of my main concerns. So the way I usually carry out in public is I just carry the frame. And then I put the slide in my pocket. <laughs> and then I just, I take whatever, hey, if it takes a second, I put the gun together and I'm back in the fight. No, I carry 3 o'clock. <laughs> I carry 3 o'clock. We clear these guns off camera. By the way, if you are loading and unloading a gun a lot and you're clearing it, safe direction just, you know, it doesn't mean you're just not pointed at someone right in front of you. You might be pointed at a wall with somebody on the other side of it. So when you clear a gun, point it down, point it at something that's going to absorb the bullet. Okay, I just want to make that point. We have clearing barrels all over our building where people do that if they have to clear a gun. Um, so I carry 3 o'clock. Why do I do that? I feel, number one, like it's the safest option. Uh, I, I'm, there's elements of appendix, which we'll talk about, that I don't really love. Uh, I'm also used to that. I've been carrying that way for my whole life, and I sh shot competitively with the gun right kind of there. So to me, it always felt like I was fastest and most consistent and safest out of the holster on the right side of my body. I also am able to conceal the gun comfortably there. Um, to me, it is more comfortable than appendix. And uh, when I'm sitting in an appendix holster, I feel kind of like I'm, you know, get, getting cramped up down there. So I just am more comfortable there. That's what I do. And the argument, if somebody really wants to make the argument, the argument is, well, appendix maybe isn't safe because uh, I know so-and-so's friend shot themselves. You'll hear stuff like that. Or it's, well, you know, you're violating one of the four gun safety rules because when you're holstering, you're pointing the gun at yourself. So that's what I want to talk about. Okay. Give me the arguments for appendix. Let's hear your kind of well, side of the let's story. Let's back there. up. I have to defend appendix. Yeah. Let's talk about Advantages and disadvantages of three and four o'clock holes. Okay, cool. So I'll give it to you. Advantages, I already went through. It's very, it's very intuitive. That's where I've always carried a gun. That's where I, you know, so as a muscle memory is there. Muscle memory is there. It's more comfortable. I feel like it's, it's, it's certainly more comfortable. I feel like it's safer. I'm not violating, you know, gun rules or okay. pointing the gun at myself. So it's to me, those are the advantages. Disadvantages, I hate standing in lines because okay. I feel like I don't have as much control of the gun. In fact, sometimes if I know I'm going to be standing in a line, I'll move the gun to the front. So you move okay? it to appendix. So I'll move it to appendix. So I do do that occasionally. Okay. Don't, don't act like that was like the big aha moment. That I was. Mean, no, it wasn't. Was, uh, so so I, I, I do move it to appendix if I'm going to be like standing in line for an extended period, which happens like, you know, I don't know, three times a year. Okay. So, so that's, that's when I move it. Um, but it, it does feel like um, the other disadvantages are mostly related to uh, uh, concealing it consistently. So if you have, if I have a gun appendix, I can look down, I know it's covered. If I have a gun at the three o'clock, every now and then I'll be like, oh, my second amendment's hanging out. And it's, so it is more likely okay. that I'll, that I'll flash so the gun. So Walmart, grab yeah. something in the top yeah. shelf. Right. Yeah. So you do, if you carry at the three o'clock, you get very good at just holding your shirt tail down and reaching with your weak hand if you've got to get something high in a in a public place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's my thoughts. Th this should be comforting, not comfortable. Oh my god! Did you just okay. roll your eyes at me? You no, just it's just like oh, it's just like the tie. It's like one of these cool gun sayings, like two is one and one is none. Or I mean, there's just a lot, but that's okay. That's fine. You're right. It should be. I've said that to people before. It should be comforting, not comfortable. I like how you came at me on something that you use. That's cool. That's yeah, actually what. I, what that's exactly there. what happened. All right. Tell <laughs> tell me the appendix argument. Okay. So. Um, Advantages of, of, of appendix. I think I feel I'm a little bit more faster. Tell us how you feel. I feel that, I think that um, it's a little bit more concealable. It, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, every fight that I've been in, either 
professionally or recreationally has gone to the ground and I can collapse on the gun and I, I think I have a little bit more control over it. I think it. you do. I think okay. that's fair. So the advantages, you would think, okay, it's it's a good good method of carry because that's all good stuff, right? Yep. Now let's get to the disadvantages, which is safety. Safety. All right. Safety. So safety. What I do when I when I when I teach classes and when I carry is when it's time to holster, I place my trigger finger on top of the slide like this. That gives me a little discomfort. Like so you're like you're very aware of it, I'm right? Very aware yeah. that it's nowhere near. Hyper deliberate. Ooh, look at I see that. Yep. Okay. So it's I'm good. hyper deliberate of where my finger's at, and I know I'm nowhere near the, the trigger guard. Then what I do is when it's time to actually place it into the holster, I look and I clear it to make sure there's nothing in there. Cords, zippers, keys, or anything else that can get into the holster, we don't want them there. Yeah, which okay? you should do where carry no matter what where right. you put the gun. Right. Yeah. And then I will lean back. Yep. Okay. Do the lean back. The weapon is pointed out past my feet a little bit, a couple feet, a couple feet in front of my feet. Okay. See what I did there? Yep. And then I place it in at an angle and then right. write it into the So holster. so what you're really saying is you're, you're kind of like relocating your entire body position, your torso, so that that muzzle is oriented away from your body as much as possible. Right. As a three o'clock carrier, I'll be honest, it still feels a little too close for comfort for me, but I, I agree that if you're super careful about it, you can do it without orienting toward yourself. I think that's true. Um, I got another advantage to three o'clock. What's that? Carry bigger guns. True. True, right? True. Okay. Okay. Okay, but but it is but it is definitely true that you can do both safely. I want to go back to the um, the reholstering thing. Okay. An enormous number of gun accidents happen reholstering, right? I'm sure you've seen it. You, you tell me, tell us about that. What happens? So things get into the trigger guard. Things get into the holster themselves. Yep. Uh, clothing. Um, I've seen a, a couple times where people are wearing a jacket and they have the cords on the sides. Oh, that's interesting. Well, you don't have jackets down here because it's true. Like, 112 degrees. So um, it has a cord that you pull to tighten it up. Yep. Those cords and with the knobs can get in the holster, yep. things like that, shirts. Yep, I think that's true. Um, I have even, I'll admit, I had an experience once with a uh, reholstering. It was like, wasn't even IWB. It was a big old leg holster in the Army. And I started to reholster. It was a 1911, so it had a safety on it. Um, but I started to reholster and my finger just drifted, like it was something about my glove, I don't know what happened, my finger just drifted into the trigger guard as the gun was going into the holster. Now I stopped early, it was fine, but it was like, oh man, I cannot believe that happened. And that's what happens. Something gets in the, inside the holster, you know, a finger, whatever, and then as it's, pushed, as it's pushed down into the holster, your shirt tail, your cord, pulls the trigger, right? Boom. Now usually it has to be kind of hooked on the corner, the front corner of the trigger for it to pull the trigger, but it certainly can and does happen. So just be aware, reholstering is a risky moment. Be extra safe, okay? Um, well, hey, look, that's our, that's our overview of appendix. I feel like we've kind of covered the pros and cons for both. Tell us in the comments what you think. They both can be done well and safely. Main thing is train, 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 practice, and you'll be good at whatever you choose to do if it's something you take seriously, right? All right, thanks so much. We'll see you next Tuesday. God bless America.